Now we will be moving into the study of geomorphology, geomorphology that is the processes and features developed by different processes of erosion. Today's class will be dealing with glaciers and glaciation. What are the glaciers and how the glaciation performs erosion and what type of landforms can develop in the mountains and also in the Arctic and Alpine environments. It's a very interesting study, particularly for the students who have not seen glaciers. People living in the tropical environment like us, we are quite used to having experience about the flowing water, river aneration, we call the pluvial landforms, Coastal areas we can visit, we can find some coastal landform features. We can go to the desert areas, the arid regions to see the sand dunes and other features developed by wind action. But to find the glaciers and also the features developed by the glacial erosion and also deposition, we have to go to the high mountains. In the Himalaya, a greater part in the upper region is still covered with the glaciers and ice sheets and all the features, they are restricted in the high altitude Himalayan landforms, in, in, in the Himalayan environment. Now people who have visited some parts of the high Himalayan region to the pilgrimage like Kedarnath, Bodrinath, Gangotri, Gomukh areas, in the summer time, they have seen some patches of snow. They have walked across, they climbed through the snow patches and after coming back, they, by mistake, they often claim that, oh yes, I have seen quite a number of glaciers in the Himalayan region. The problem is that the snow patch and the glacier are the two completely different things. I am showing you some of the snow patches that you can see anywhere in the high altitude areas, even before you reach the glaciers. These can be by mistake taken as the glaciers, but they are really not. So first of all, I would like to caution my students, don't make mistakes by confusing snow patches with the glaciers. Four photographs I have shown, the one on the left top shows some snow channels. They are the snow patches and also the avalanche channels through which the snow can come down. And if you go and visit this area in the summer time, you don't find any snow as such. So they become almost clear. The hill slope becomes completely devoid of any snow. On the right also there is a snow patch. It is just deposited on the slope in a patch. The one on the bottom left, it is also a patch of snow since it is deposited in the deposited in the bottom of the slope. It is wider but still it is not a glacier. On the right bottom another snow patch. It is just melting in the process of melting. So these are the snow patches. Now you can ask me, how can we make differentiation between a glacier and a snow patch? My answer will be in this form. How to make distinction between a snow patch and a glacier? So let us see. There are four criteria. One, a glacier can never melt completely any time of the year. So it is a permanent snow compact body of snow never melts completely. Second criterion will be glacier has an origin, is a certain origin from somewhere, is a vast snow laden area from where it takes off. So it has to have a certain original origin, place of origin. The third will be the glaciers must have on either side and also in front the ridge of debris material which are called 
the morainic debris and fourth the glacier must have a flow structure that means if you look at a glacier it has some cracks and also bending lines of formations on the body showing and proving that it has been moving or it has moved in the past so these are the features these are the criteria with which we can decide a glacier and distinguish it between glacier and the snow patch also this when we go to the field we find different types of glaciers what are the different types the continental glaciers we cannot find any continental continental glacier in the in india we have to go to the arctic and all the arctic regions like the antarctic continent and also canadian shield areas baffin islands greenland there are the continental glaciers the vast glaciers covering very extensive areas wide stretch of land is covered by the continental glaciers in those areas in those countries the second one is the valley glacier long glaciers flowing through the valley in the mountains like in the himalaya in the alps in the rockies in the andes valley wall glaciers the small glaciers which are joining with the valley glaciers coming down from the valley walls on either side so this is the third type of glacier they are smaller in size compared to the valley glacier and obviously compared to the continental glaciers it is true that the continental glaciers are the vastest the largest ones and finally the fourth type of glacier the piedmont glaciers again these piedmont glaciers can be found in the arctic regions and let us see what do they look like starting from continental glaciers through valley wall glacier valley uh, glacier and also piedmont glaciers let us have a look this is the one continental glaciers covering a vast area this picture was taken from baffin island north of canada it's a huge island it's very wide stretch of the ice compact ice and if you just look at this it has the extent not only that it has the it it shows quite clearly that it never melts completely these are the lines the showing that this is flowing this is called the flow structure and there are some morainic ridges on the border line second one is the valley glacier i have already mentioned that in the himalaya and also in the rockies andes alps there are quite a number of uh, there is a uh, number of valley glaciers this picture is the valley glacier in the Hima, in the european part and it shows that how long it can be it is covering a valley it continues to the valley down slope and now the third type the valley wall glaciers these are the small glaciers originating from the top of the mounds the snow peaks where the perpetual snow is there compact snow it is fed by the snow and comes down through the valley wall to join with the main valley glacier you cannot see the valley glacier here because it is well below the line here it is hidden but we can see clearly the valley wall glaciers up there as they are coming down this picture was taken from kanchenjung area and another unique photograph that i am showing you is showing the form of a piedmont glacier that means at the bottom of the hill as the glacier comes down into the valley and spreads widely it is just like a tarn because after coming through the mountain when it finds a valley at the bottom of the valley it spreads widely and it forms a tarn so these are the four types of glaciers before we go into the detailed study of geomorphology of the glaciers the geographers will be more interested to find and also study the geomorphological features developed by the moving glaciers 
So it will be very important to have clear idea about these glaciers, types of glaciers. And now let us have some idea the types of glaciers that we have in the Himalayan region. Himalaya is a vast area and it is the mountain, is the only mountain in the, in the world that has uh, glaciers as many as 3,500 small and large glaciers. No other mountains in the world is having so many glaciers in that part. The first I am showing you the Baldar glacier in Karakoram, although it is not exactly in the Himalaya, it is north of Himalaya, but the system is the Himalaya. The Baldar glacier is coming from that distance through the valley winding and all the way down slope. The second one is the Siachen glacier. I hope and I am quite sure that my students have heard about this glacier because this is very important in the sense that it is located in a very strategic point between uh, Kashmir region on the other side of which the occupied area by the uh, Pakistan is there. So it forms almost a borderline. So this glacier is very, very important and also the army people often have their camps in this area to study, not only to study, to protect their land uh, from the enemies from outside. The other glaciers, the most famous another one is Gangotri Glacier. If you go to Uttaranchal state, you can go to Gangot to visit Gangotri Glacier. This is the Gangotri Glacier. This is the image, satellite image. But when you go to the ground, it looks like this. This picture was taken during the heavy snowfall. So it is covered with snow, fresh snow, but the main glacier is just hidden under the fresh snow. This is, these are not the glaciers, these are not the glaciers, but the main glacier is underneath the fresh snow, it's a compact ice. If you go to the source of river Bhagirathi, the Gangotri glacier is giving rise to Bhagirathi river, it is the Gomukh area. People often have a fallacy thought or they mistakenly believe that Gomukh, that means the origin of river Bhagirathi, from Gangotri Glacier is it's looking like a mouth, looking like the mouth of a cow. Does it look like a mouth of a cow? It's no. So why it is Gomuk then? So stories that the Munirishis in the past, they believed that river Bhagirathi is so sacred and as it is getting its origin, the point of origin must be the face or the mouth of the earth. So that is why they have given the name the Gomuk. So Go in one meaning, this word means is cow, but the other meaning in Sanskrit is also the earth. So that is why it is called Gomuk. It is not like the mouth of a cow. When you stand here, just in front of the Gomuk and look down, you can see the river is flowing down through the valley. So this photograph was taken having the main glacier behind you. This is the picture of Gangotri Glacier. Now I come to the another to another glacier, the Khumbu Glacier in Nepal Himalaya. This Khumbu Glacier is very important in the sense that it was the first route to conquer successfully the top of Mount Everest. Here is Mount Everest. So this is Khumbu Glacier. You can see the moraine, the lateral moraines are there and the glacier is wide, winding through the valley and just at the far end near the skyline you can see Mount Everest. So another glacier we are coming to the east in the part of Sikkim Himalaya. This is a small glacier, but it's very important in the sense that geomorphologists often visit these areas and they study the retreat pattern of this glacier these days. This is called Ratung Glacier in Kanchenyanga area in Sikkim Himalaya. Main Kanchenyanga summit is just hidden under the cloud, so you cannot see it. 
And this is a satellite image. If you just go to the sky and look down, you can see in the Himalayan region, Eastern Himalaya, how the glaciers are taking off from the snow laden area, they are called the Nive field area, and stretching through the valley down to the lower part of the mountains. Now, some features directly related to the body of the glacier. As the glacier moves down, it forms some cracks like the saw teeth. So there are the cracks and the, these cracks developed on the glacier actually fractures the main glacier into several pieces and it looks like this crevasses of the glacier. So crevasses are the cut lines or the fracture parts, fractured parts of the glacier. When the glacier comes down, it can break, have a certain break and the upper part can be completely detached from the lower part. So this crack has developed here, it's called the Bagsrund. Here is a mountaineer standing here, he's uh, just looking at it. The source area is completely exhausted now. So the crack again is showing that the glacier is going to be diminished in size in near future. Now, before we look into the types of features developed by the glaciers, we have to understand the processes. What are the main processes? The hydraulic process, that means the pressure of the water which is concentrated in the glacier. It has a pressure on the slope, creating on the slope, it is called the shear trace and with this it causes erosion in four forms. First one is abrasion, this is actually rubbing of the materials on the rock body with the direct contact of the glacier, the plastic molding, the finer debris which are carried down through the glacier and it molds the material and also it forms the pressure on the main rock and it fractures the rock. It actually erodes the rock in a way that it gets fractured. And also the another process of erosion is called the plucking. Plucking means actually taking up from the material. So from the mountains over which the glacier is flowing down, it picks up the material, it collects the material from the rocks and it carries down in the downslope areas.